Hey guys, it's Chandler Vincent with WeatherMade.com for the month of July. Let's weld some stainless. Check that bottom right hand corner with the part number. Make sure we're looking at the same blueprint. We'll get started. All right, guys, step one is uh, identifying the parts. We're going to go to the right hand corner of the blueprint. We're going to start with part number one, which is the base plate. It is the biggest rectangle piece you get in this kit. That's part number one. Part number two is that side piece. It's about three and a half inches wide, five inches tall. There's two of them. Part number three is a bigger rectangle. It's three inches tall. That's part number three. Part number four is that really sharp triangle looking piece. There's two of them. Part number five is the piece with the purge hole on the back. Part number six is the rectangle on the top, two inches wide. That's part number six. All right, part number seven is part with the welder made logo. You should have a total of nine pieces in this kit. If you got everything, everything looks good. Let's get started on the cleaning process. Okay, so I just got a nice clean flapper wheel. Getting the dross off the back side. Just putting a light, light polish on the, on the weld face. Making sure all the oxidized layer is gone. And then after I'm done doing that, I'd rub it down with some acetone, make sure I got rid of all of the surface contaminants, any fingerprints, finger grease, in this case, Sharpie marker. All right, we're going to start with tacking anything that's on the same plane, which is going to be parts two and four. You're going to have two sets. Make sure they're facing opposite directions for one on each side of the project. Now we're going to start tacking parts three, five, and six together. We're going to flip them around and tack them on the back side. Just nice little fusion tacks. Make sure they're nice and straight. Nice and tight butt joints, and we'll bend those to the angle desired here in a minute. So if those are tacked on the back side nice, um, those are going to bend really good in, in the future. All right, transfer over to the Easy Tack tool. We're going to tack our part seven onto our two and four assemblies. We'll flip it over, tack on the other side. Give them a nice little brush while they're hot. Get rid of that oxidized layer. And we're good to go. You set that easy tack tool aside. And uh, now we're ready to tack on parts six, five, and three. We're gonna start at the very top. Just line up those corners. We're not going to worry about bending the project yet. Just make sure you get those top corners lined up nice and straight and square. And then we'll bend them down as we go. Just make sure you keep a nice consistent corner joint all the way around that back side. And uh, we'll start laying out the base plate. I'm going to grab my sliding T-square, set it to 3 quarters of an inch, and mark both sides. Just do a nice little scratch there on the plate. You're three quarters of an inch from both edges and then half an inch on the back side. You can see those dimensions in the top view of the blueprint. I'm putting nice tacks on all corners of the, of the project. 
and fusing a couple tacks on all the butt joints, just making sure this project's not going to warp when we're welding and make sure the heat can transfer through the project evenly. I'm uh, stuffing the purge hole with steel wool, put my hose in there. It, it works, it's not the greatest. I'm working on getting a, a little product on the website, a little purge plate that will be used for all these projects. It'll help you guys out a little bit. I'm welding these horizontal corners and flat corner joints first. Make sure you guys have a pretty hefty post flow setting on your welder, making sure that argon's keeping that stainless protected as it cools. And uh, brushing the end of your welds when you're done welding and making sure any oxidized layers removed. The hotter the stainless is, the easier the uh, oxidized layer removes with the wire brush. So oftentimes right after you weld, it's good to just get a quick brush there at the end. Make sure you always clip the ends of your wire. Don't be starting off with an oxidized tip on your filler wire. I'm using our TIG finger to uh, protect my hand there with the filler wire. These are available on the website. All right, guys, we're going to go to the clipboard here. I'm going to explain a little bit of a challenge I can see in this project with parts four and two. I'm going to draw it out here. That part on the left hand side is part number two. The part on the right is number four. Right here in this top corner, part number four gets really thin. As you guys can see, it gets really sharp and really, really narrow. And so as I saw myself welding up this butt joint, part number four, since it's so thin, that top corner got very hot. So you guys need to reduce your amperage at the top half of that weld joint. You need to lower your amperage because that part gets very hot and I've, you'll melt that corner out. So just pay attention to that. You'll have two, you'll have two shots at that butt joint. Just make sure you, you pay attention to your weld pull. The second it starts to get a little hot in favor of that, that right hand side, part number four, just reduce your amperage and uh, add your filler wire on part four instead of part two. And that will help cool that side of the weld pool and it'll help you kind of keep an even consistent weld bead. Um, that's a very good way to practice a scenario where one base plate or one part of a weld is thinner or gets hotter than the other and you have to adapt and overcome with your amperage and your filler wire technique. So uh, give, it, give it the best you got. It's good practice. And let me know how it goes. Okay, so now I'm doing this, the outside corner joints of part three and five, going in the vertical progression, wrapping up around, making sure that the, I'm going the same direction all the way around. I'm gonna flip it around and go to the other side, let that side cool off for a minute. We've got those really long outside corner joints on part seven with the logo. So I wanted to make sure that that side had time to cool a little bit before I went to that side. Those are very long corner joints. The project's very hot at this point. So make sure that you study that weld pull and realize that it's gonna be getting hotter on that top half and start fading off with your foot pedal. If you don't have a foot pedal, that's where you increase your travel speed and increase your filler wire deposition 
that will help cool off the weld pull and uh, your travel speed will help you run away from that heat a little better. Okay, now that those are done, we're going to weld the, uh, the fillet weld along the base plate. These are my favorites, what favorite welds on these stainless projects because that base plate sucks the heat out of it so well. They come out nice and silver and uh, I don't have to worry about heat as much because just the difference in that heat sink right, right underneath the project. If you guys want to study a little bit about heat distribution and studying the way the stainless takes heat, just raise this project off your, your table with some spacers where that table cannot cool that fillet weld and we'll watch the difference. It's an, it's an amazing difference and it'll help you understand the way heat travels through these projects. And if your project's getting too hot, everything's going south, just feel free to step away for a minute, let that project cool, or give it a light dab with a wet rag, do a little bit of quenching in some areas you don't have welds. Uh, just do what you need to do to get the most amount of practice out of these projects. That's what they're for. This project was awesome. I love the way this project turned out. A lot of outside corners. Um, a very unique challenge with the butt joints with parts two and four. I'm excited to see how these projects turn out for you guys. Thanks for being with me for another month. Uh, thanks for being part of the Welder Made family. We'll see you next month.